we crossed at dusk, uh, just as the sun was setting, um, in an old beat up car with tinted windows. I can't even really remember breathing while we were driving across the border. If I have a style yet, it's probably changing. It's very clean, um, maybe a bit too clean. I think you lose a bit of of life when things are too organized like that. But now I find myself wanting to make my photographs a bit more sloppy. We came in from Chad into Darfur. That was probably one of the most nerve-wracking parts of the entire trip. I'm not sure that we were even confident up until the time that we put our bags down inside of Darfur that we thought we could, we could make it there. We were literally going up and down the sides of these mountains every day. And there were sharp, jagged rocks. You'd be climbing and it'd be hot and dusty and you'd come over a ridge and all of a sudden there would just be fields of lemon trees or fields of orange trees and crystal clear brooks. And then that's when you could smell the greenery. You start to recognize the smell of water and also the smell of plants. Because when you're in the desert without either of those things, you don't think about it until, until you haven't had a shower for a week and then you realize that you can smell a drop of water landing on the sand. When we got there, everyone inside was still asleep. You couldn't see anything. And then slowly people started to light fires in this cave and then you got to see the depth. You couldn't even see the end of the cave. You just saw these fires and the smoke started billowing out of the cave. That really told the entire story because why were two or three hundred people living in this cave surviving on potatoes and some tea? Well, they're living in this cave because they've been chased from their homes because their homes have been attacked or burnt or bombed. The government forces and militias were going on sprees of destruction and raping women and girls. So within that one space, you kind of had the entire story um, coming to life. The photographs are a small part of it. It's, it's a way to communicate um, what I saw. It's a way to communicate what's going on. And it's also the people there giving them a chance to, to communicate to a certain extent. You know, it's not about me. It's about the people in those pictures. We made the decision to stop and walked up the hill to this house. And this boy was just sitting there on a stool. You kind of freeze for a moment um, and try to understand what's in front of you. You just walk into this small house on the side of the mountain and for some, for some reason, this family's home had been bombed. It's not even about the photographs, it's about speaking with people, it's about having 800 cups of tea before you can even discuss what you'd like to do with photography. 
because a lot of people you take these photographs and leave and they really don't know they don't get to see um, see what happens so there's a mass amount of trust there to know that I'm representing them and their story in the right way.